modular era. This next project, thanks so Celestia launched on mainnet this month as a new data availability network. The project says this is a new era in blockchain architecture. Joining us now to discuss is Mustafa Al Bassam, who now serves as CEO of Celestia Labs. Welcome to the show. Hello, great to be here. Great to have you here. Now, let's talk about Celestia, but let's just zoom out here. This started as a research paper while you were doing your PhD. Talk to us about the problem uh, or the, you were trying to solve or um, the hypothesis you were trying to prove when you set out on this uh, research journey. Sure. So they, uh, Celestia was created in 2019 as a white paper when I was doing research into layer one scaling solutions. And previously I had co-authored a project called uh, Chainspace, which was one of the first blockchain sharding protocols that was acquired by Facebook, but I didn't join Facebook and I started Celestia mm -hmm. instead, which was formerly known as Laser Ledger. And the reason why I started it is because at the time I saw that there was a lot of very complicated layer one scaling solutions being proposed. This was a time when Ethereum had its six phase Ethereum 2.0 roadmap before rollups even existed. There was this extremely complicated Ethereum kind of scaling roadmap with a thousand shards and a six, six phase roadmap. So I kind of decided to kind of like go back to the basics and really ask myself the question is, which is how would I create a blockchain a very simple blockchain from scratch, or like what is the what what is the fundamental aspects of a blockchain and how could we scale that? So Celestia is just basically an extremely minimal blockchain that only does consensus and data availability and scales that really well and leaves and it doesn't have a smart contract environment, it doesn't have an execution environment. Instead, it leaves that aspect to the developer to deploy their own execution environment on top of it in the form of a rollup. And that's what we basically call a modular blockchain design, where previous blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they try to do everything. For example, you know, uh, Ethereum has its consensus mechanism, but it also has an embedded smart contract environment. But with modular blockchains, the base layer is no longer responsible for execution, and it only just scales consensus really well. And on, um, on top of that, you only have roll-ups on top or, or layer twos that are responsible for the, for the execution. So this is a, a, I, I'm trying to use a Lego analogy because everyone knows Lego. Uh, so one would think they're not even just, these aren't even Lego blocks. This is just sort of like the, the, that green platform you get from Lego that you could build on top of, correct? That's the best way to describe it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good analogy, actually. Um, what we're trying to do is make that green platform as big as possible, and not dict and we don't. It's like buying a green platform without any Legos on top of it already, and developers can create the Legos on top or design the Legos on top, however, they, however it fits their use case. So, okay. like instead of having um, the Ethereum virtual machine, for example, if you're on Ethereum, you have to you have to um, use the Ethereum virtual machine and create a contract in Solidity. And that's part of the reason why Ethereum can't scale, for example, because the Ethereum isn't parallelizable. And everyone has to ex execute the same transaction um, because Ethereum has this world computer model where everything runs on the same execution environment. Um, whereas with rollups, the idea is that you can create effectively your own virtual blockchains where every application could have its own chain or you could have multiple different chains. For example, you have Optimism, you have Arbitrum. Those are all like kind of independent chains with their own in environments. And so um, it's just a, it's a fundamentally more scalable way of scaling blockchain technology than having this single smart contract environment where everything happens on top of it. Instead, we have a modular, modular ecosystem where you can swap out different components and different applications kind of run independently with each other. Just like how the web works today, like you have different websites running on their own servers. You don't have every single, you don't have every single website running on the same server on the same data center. Mm -hmm. So it, it, how would I judge, how, how would anybody judge its uh, performance relative to the likes of, uh, let's say Ethereum? Uh, it, it give us some numbers here that, you know, that you do better, that Celestial does sure. better than Ethereum. Sure. So the main, um, in this kind of like modular landscape, um, the way to judge performance is not transaction throughput, but through data throughput. Um, so 
right now with Ethereum um, has, has a roll-up specific scaling roadmap where it's supposed to scale with roll-ups. But right now in Ethereum, the bottleneck for roll-ups is that data availability, just the, the cost of posting that roll-up data on chain is very expensive. And that's because the Ethereum chain right now could only handle something like 10 kilobits per second. It's, it's kind of like in the dial-up era. Um, it has very low data throughput for these roll-ups to post their data onto it. But with Celestia, the idea is to kind of like bring um, blockchains into the broadband era. And so with Celestia, it has a more of order of magnitude of you know, a megabit per second of, of data throughput, 100x as much data throughput as Ethereum can do right now. And that removes the scaling, scaling bottleneck for these roll-ups because now there's a lot more data throughput for these roll-ups to actually post their data on. Or as you, as you use in your analogy, um, making the green platform for the Legos much bigger. Now, we've spoken about the benefits for developer building in this ecosystem versus some of the other ones out there. What are the benefits for the end users of the applications that these developers uh, would be building? Sure. I think there's kind of like two main benefits. One of the most obvious ones is, is scalability, and scalability results in cheaper transaction fees. If you have a more scalable you know, a blockchain architecture, you obviously have cheaper transaction fees for users, and they're most like, and we're more likely to get adoption that way. But one of the other benefits, which I think is um, underrated, is that developers can create much better products thanks to the fact that they have much more flexibility in how they design their uh, applications. Because as I said, because developers can create their own layer twos and rollups, they're no longer limited to using whatever smart contract environment is is on the base layer, like the Ethereum virtual machine. Instead, they can kind of create um, a, environments that are more uh, like uh, suited for their use case. So, to give you one example, there's a there's a, there's a there's some gaming projects called Curio and Argus, which are building gaming engines on Celestia that can run on-chain games that simply are not possible in a traditional blockchain paradigm. For example, Curio have actually managed to put like a real-time strategy game with like a 0.5 second, um, kind of like what they call a tick engine. Like you can, if you move your character, it moves immediately and is reflected on-chain immediately. And that's because they've managed to modify the Ethereum virtual machine to embed that actual game logic directly into the Ethereum virtual machine rather than having to implement it as a smart contract. And so it fundamentally allows applications that have not been possible before just like um, on the web, there's all sorts, of, all sorts of web infrastructure that are only made possible thanks to the fact that people can deploy their own servers easily. Now, you've had some competitors pop up that are working on a similar solution. There have also been layer ones and layer twos that are also trying to solve the scalability uh, issue in different ways. How do, but they still haven't um, been able to gain market share from Ethereum. How are you planning to gain market share as the project continues to grow? Sure. So I, I should mention like Celestia is currently the first and the only uh, specialized data availability that has launched. There's some other data availability layers that will launch, but right now Celestia is the only one um, because we used to start it way earlier. As I said, I, I, I kind of saw this as a problem in 2019. But right now we have a rapidly growing eco ecosystem where uh, because we're the first to launch, um, thanks to the efforts of the, of, of the developer community, there's various there's various roll-up frameworks that you can go and use today to deploy a roll-up on Celestia. So, for example, you can deploy your Optimism roll-up by using Celestia as a data layer. You can deploy an Arbitrum Nitro roll-up using Celestia as a data layer uh, because Celestia is the only one that actually exists right now that provides um, that, that provides specialized data availability. All right, Mustafa, we are going to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining and congratulations on the launch. Thank you. That was Celestia Lab CEO Mustafa Al Bassam. Make sure you sign up for Coindesk's protocol newsletter, which explores the tech behind crypto one block at a time. You can find that at coindesk.com slash newsletters.